Hello, in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of the Fairyland I created that was featured in my last video, Fairyland and Dragon Fight. My aim was for this to be a very whimsical and colorful village. What I thought most important was for it to have cheerful green spring-like ground cover. I played around with different ideas and initially I tried to use this large piece of green ground cover I have that you get from the railroad scenery section in the craft store. And I was hoping I could make hills that would be a good contrast with this ground cover. But as you can see, it's rather dark and drab and doesn't evoke that cheerful fairy tale look that I was going for. So I decided to use the fabric that I was only planning to use to make the hill section and use it for the ground cover in the village as well. I think the variation in color of this fabric gives a lot of depth. So I'm always keeping my eye out for fabrics that mimic the colors of nature. So here you can see on the bottom, I put a blue fabric that looks like water, and then I layered yards of the green fabric on top of that. I then draped the same green fabric in the back to mimic hills. And then I wanted the blue in the back to be a waterfall. So now the challenge was creating the waterfall. My vision for the waterfall was for it to be surrounded by lush greenery bursting with flowers. So I started stacking up some floral stems from the craft store that I've collected over the years. And the big rock on the right is something I found outside of my house and it gives a rugged natural look. Now to create the water was more of a challenge but I decided to take that fake snow that you get in bags around Christmas time and I kept stretching a piece out to try to make it look like a stream of water. I made three of these strips of water and then I took the fake snow and started randomly balling it up at the bottom to make it look like the waterfall is coming down, crashing on the rocks and then foaming up. And for the rocks, I used rocks from outside of my house and then on the side, some Playmobil rocks. So the overall effect of the waterfall turned out better than I expected. And I kept building up the sides with more floral stems to give a tropical floral look. And I know it borderline looks like maybe a flower arrangement that you'll see in the craft store, you know, hanging on the wall or something. But when I tried to minimize the amount of floral stems I was using, it looked a little sparse and just didn't give a wow factor look either. Next, I cut out some dirt paths out of felt, and then I dragged a small wire brush repeatedly on the felt to rough it up like a dirt path. One of my favorite things about this village are the little trees I was able to make. I found this tabletop decoration at the craft store and I thought that each stem looked like well manicured miniature trees. So I cut a bunch off and then created individual bases using XPS foam. This is very durable foam that is often used in construction and comes in very large sheets from places like Home Depot and Lowe's. This is much more durable than regular styrofoam and easier to carve into natural looking pieces. Using this foam is a tip that I picked up from Jeremy and his Black Magic Craft channel, which is a YouTube channel with many videos focused on creating Dungeons and Dragons themed terrain and buildings. Using balled up aluminum foil helps create natural texture to the foam. So I created several bases for the trees and then I mixed in some black paint with brown to create the dirt color. You can see I've painted several bases here and then I just hot glued the trees onto each base. I love the look of these trees and it's a cheap DIY to make a setup more unique. So this is an overview of my entire setup in some disarray because I'm about to take it apart and uh, it's kind of fallen apart a little bit because I already made my video, uh, which is the last video I posted. You can see my large backdrop and on one side I have a flap 
put up so I can let the sun shine in from the patio doors in the back. I have another colorful scenery backdrop over here on the right that's leaning on the couch. And then you could see these blue and green drapes on either side, which are just vinyl tablecloths that I got from the dollar store. And I use them to block out furniture in the background on the sides of the setup. So a fairly large setup like this stays up for two to three months. And unfortunately it blocks the TV on the wall in the background, but we really enjoy our hobbies, so it's worth it but it would be difficult if you had pets or children to keep this up for so long. Here I have my Pegasus and Dragon figures, which are suspended on fishing line, and I used this to make my stop motion fight in the sky in my last video. And the fishing line is stretched out between a pulley system that is attached to two large furniture pieces. And on the left, I had to bring in a ladder to have something tall enough to anchor the backdrop to. The Pegasus and Dragon fight was a fun and challenging experiment and reminded me of the old Clash of the Titans movie. Okay, so now let's just take a closer up view at all the little parts of the village. So first in this left front corner, we have a vintage Sylvanian tree house. And there's Brainy Smurf giving his lecture. I used flowers from different Sylvanian garden sets to decorate around the village. And I also found some pebbles to randomly put along the river. This is a little bench for babies from another Sylvanian set, a little stump of wood from another Sylvanian set, and some of the DIY trees I made. This is a dollar store gnome, and they usually come in a pack of three for the dollar, or nowadays a dollar 25. And I've collected a number of these dollar store fairy village items to use in my setups over the past few years. Now the selling point for this treehouse is that you could pull this hanging thing at the bottom and you have a cuckoo bird that comes out. It's a really cute and clever touch. The top opens up and you can see a ladder leading down to the inside. And a look on the other side shows you another ladder and a slide. Moving on, I tried to make these encircled communities throughout the village and here we have our first one with an adorable dollar store accessory there. And this year they had an amazing selection of fairy houses at Dollar Tree. Just look at the detail and you'll see the variety throughout the village. This strawberry house is one of my favorites. Just the paint jobs and the detail on these houses this year were amazing. Sometimes these dollar store fairy village items can have shoddy paint jobs. These houses are pretty clean and they had a huge variety. I actually bought about 20 of them. And these are more foliage pieces that I get from craft stores to decorate around the village. Now all the villagers have a sweet tooth and here is another Sylvanian set. And these cute little desserts are from one of the capsule toys. I made stone paths leading up to each house by cutting out these paper stones from a piece of craft paper I found. They're also easy enough to make on your own by just cutting out stone shapes from gray paper or coloring in stones of the color of your choice. Next in the village on a little hill, we have the Secret Trees gift set. It comes with this cute baby ride with seats shaped like acorns. I got the pink tree from a craft store and then the pink flower is from the dollar store. It comes with colorful flowers that you could put in the tree and I'm pointing to these purple flowers, which were miniature flowers that I added in. Now this set has its merits, but it's not a favorite of mine. I got it more for nostalgia because my bedroom growing up as a little girl was actually the same color scheme as this set. My mother had decorated my bedroom before I can even remember, and I had grass green carpet and then green wallpaper that had flowers very similar in color to what comes in this set. 
So I always felt like I was in a magical garden when I was in my bedroom. And here is the wallpaper I'm talking about in an old picture I have of my bedroom. My brother in the photo, I edited out in green. I do like the soft green color of the base on this set. And here I have my dollar store little person dressed in purple that came in a pack of three. My favorite item in the set is the tree stump where you can flip this big fruit tart over to hide it. The gift set comes with three fairies with hats and beautiful wands and four baby figures dressed in costume. The baby on the far right is the one I suspended from fishing line to make it look like he's flying through the village. Next, I love Wizard of Oz themed trees and I got this beautiful piece from Michaels a few years ago. It's so well detailed and it comes holding a book and staff and then I was able to nestle a baby critter in its lap. And then here we have the elders of the village, a gnome and Papa Smurf, consulting with a wisdom tree. In this colorful scene on the river, I have the swan boat ride with the Norwood mouse baby. The Van Dyke otter babies are in the scene and the Puddleford ducklings are crossing the river. This is just a flower we found on the floor in the craft store that was just going to be thrown away. Next we have the baby guinea pig and a fairy sitting on a bench by the river. And the bench is from Dollar Tree with nice butterflies painted on the back. This is a beautiful Doll's House boutique miniature I got years ago from the online Sylvanian Storekeeper site in London. Now we come to the colorful waterfall and I have a little fairy sitting on the ledge and I just like the look of the rugged ledge and the other rocks that the water is coming down and splashing upon. I really like the pink flower at the top here because it gives a lush tropical look. At the top of the waterfall, I have more floral stems and another fairy sitting on the rock and looking over the village. I love the details of the carved face on the tree I got from the dollar store here, and I put a baby plume owl on top. Next, we come to the misty forest pumpkin carriage in front of the castle, and it has beautiful soft colors and details on the doors and wheels. And you could see the baby critter in the inside of the carriage, which is quite small. I'm not a fan of the Sylvanian ponies, so I find other brands of horses that I much prefer. These are rocks made of XPS foam and then painted gray and topped with a dry brush technique to make them look realistic. I wanted this to look like the remains of a rock wall leading up to the castle. These are wildflowers growing between the base of the castle and the rock wall. At the top of the castle hill, we have another dollar store item and a Smurf holding a secret key. This is a Lego Cinderella castle I got on sale a few years ago. I love the color scheme with the dark blue spires and then the pops of pink you get with the flags and then the overall purple and natural gray of the castle. There are so many toy castle options that can be incorporated into a fairy tale village. And in case you're curious, this is just a quick look at the inside of the castle. Comes with some croissants there and different food items. And it has a bed and a kitchen at the top. Next, we have a miniature rustic house I got a few years ago from Michaels and I topped it off with a miniature eagle. I added trees and some other foliage in the back. And then we have the water's beaver baby at the side of the house ready to climb a little ladder from the Sylvanian collection that I added to the side of the house. And then we have a miniature animal and a gnome and then another rustic dollar storehouse. And there's another gnome in green in the back there hiding in the brush. On the other side, I put a broom behind the fennec fox. And then in the back, you can see the trees and more foliage and another miniature animal. I love the dollar storehouses in this next neighborhood. The purple coloring is so pretty and just look at the floral detailed roof on the middle one.
Here we have another cool tree from the dollar store and then a gnome and a sweet little lamb sitting on the grass. This is one of my favorite scenes with a chocolate rabbit bunny dressed as a ladybug trying to escape over the rock wall from Gargamel. Moving down, we have the towering baby primrose windmill. Now it originally comes as a two level structure with a nice balloon and then you could get two add-on levels. The one with the blue trim here is an add-on bathroom level. You could see on this next level I added some window boxes to make it look like there are herbs growing. And then the top room with the clear walls is another add-on level that I think I've been seeing called a music room, but I'm using mine as an observatory. I much prefer the style and color scheme of these earlier baby park and nursery items compared to the more modern nursery and amusement park items in the collection. At the bottom, we have Greedy Smurf approaching a Critter Bakery baby. On the top floor observatory, there's a mobile hanging there, and then I added a Sylvanian telescope from the school watching set. And this is a cute Fisher Price bench I found at a flea market, and it is a perfect fit with this Sylvanian collection. Here you can see how well it seats the baby guinea pig. Here at the bottom, I added these fluffy yellow balls from the floral section in the craft store between the base of the windmill and the ground to have a smoother transition. Here's a look at the inside of the windmill, but I didn't focus on decorating the inside for this setup, but it gives you an idea of the little baby furniture and how it fits in. Here's some of the furniture. I didn't add the bathroom pieces at this point. Next, we come to the Critter Garden Patch, surrounded by more gnomes and some of the trees that I made. And this is another dollar store item. Then we come to the Misty Forest Tomato House, and on the inside is a cute bed with a tomato pillow. The bed fits a baby critter, and then in my last video, I had little bunnies sleeping on the leaves. This figure is from the Banana Trio, one of my favorite trios because I love their little hats and outfits. And then this is a cool dollar store piece where I put little sundaes and cupcakes in there. So. Any critter walking by in the neighborhood can get a sweet treat. This is another cute dollar store find, a nice bench with mushroom detail there. And you can see how it's the perfect size for a baby critter. Next, we have the Misty Forest Mushroom House with unique shades of orange, yellow, and pink. A baby can sleep on this pink flower, which can also spin around. There is a mushroom cutout detail on the door and strawberries on the fence. Taking a look at the inside, it comes with a little bed that is in the shape of a walnut shell. Very cute. And it also comes with a chair that's in the shape of a walnut shell. And here's a little baby critter sitting in the bed. This is a nice neighborhood enclosed by an arc of the trees I made on one side. It features the Sylvanian family's food court, which is this nice versatile vintage piece that comes with a hot dog stand, some fries, french fries, apples, and some other food items. And I added the cupcakes for this setup. It has nice details of carved animals on the backs of the seats. And then we have more cute dollar store houses. And this last one has a nice flower detail on the roof. In between two neighborhoods, we have a campsite here with a fire going and a bench and the baby skunk critter cooking something in a pot. And this last neighborhood also has a critter centerpiece table with critter accessories on top 
and I really like this cute bunny shaped bread with a jam on it and that is from a Critter capsule toy. Here's a closer look at more of the cute dollar store houses. This house has a pretty flower for a roof and a tiny winding staircase on the side. I love this cute little gnome I got from a craft store years ago dressed in pink and green. This pretty covered bridge comes with a misty forest mushroom house and the base of the bridge, just coincidentally, is a perfect match with the color of felt I used for the dirt path. This dollar store gnome looks so cute standing on the bridge. You can often find fairy village welcome signs like this in the dollar store too. I have a few of these pretty horses that I got for about $3 each and they look really great with the Sylvanian Families collection. These horses were used in my Three Amigos video from a while back, which was the first video to feature all three of my little rascal babies together on an adventure. This is a really pretty patch of roses from the dollar store. And then I have my baby critter dressed as a prince and he came in the set with a princess and his sword is actually a little charm for a necklace. So that completes the tour of my Fairyland Village. So it's time to take it down and move on to my next big project. It will be nice to see the TV again when I take the backdrop down. I think I'll miss the waterfall the most, so it'll probably show up in another setup in the future. I think the critter sets worked really well with the dollar store items and all the other miniature items for the fairy theme. And you don't have to have the Misty Forest Sylvanian Family series to make a Fairyland Village. I think there are a lot of little houses in the collection like the Raspberry Home and the Cozy Cottage and the little gingerbread house that would look great in a Fairy Village. So to sum up some tips which you probably already know, don't settle for unnatural colored terrain, have fun, experiment, and mix in different toy and miniature brands, Varying scale can be whimsical. The dollar store can be really awesome. And throwing in a dragon never really hurts. <laughs>